Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday News Show. Terry and Hugo are out on a shoot, so you've got me, but we've got lots of action to cover, including a roundup of the lead and paraclimbing IFSC comps, a big mountain first ascent in Alaska, and 15% off, well, something on the Epic TV shop. As you can see, uh, my knees are out, which Flo the cameraman is finding very off-putting. My knees are tanned, they're brown. Uh, you wouldn't want to see any higher up, it gets very, very white, but apologize. I apologize for the knee incident. Okay, we're gonna start with the IFSC. So spoiler alert, if you don't want to know who won the lead and paraclimbing competitions, skip this bit. Boulder we covered in last week's live news show from Innsbruck, and there's a link down below to those episodes. Winning the double gold in Boulder and now lead was Yanya Garnbrett. She had to turn on a 100% try-hard mode, but enjoyed climbing on such a hard route. She set a high point that no one else could beat, with Aymori coming closest with 33 plus, followed by a crowd favorite, Jessica Pilz, who got the bronze and was surprised and delighted with the medal. No one topped the men's route either, but coming out last was Sasha Lehman, who was on fire. He reached the same high point as Alex Magos, but due to countback, Sasha took the gold in his first win since 2019, while Alex Magos returns to the podium with a silver. Getting the bronze was Jakob Schubert, another Austrian athlete getting onto the podium. The paraclimbing comp was packed with lots of different categories competing. Here's the winners. Men's RP1, Neurological or Physiological Impairment, was taken by Alois Poitier, while Men's RP2 by Ivan Escalar, who fell on the headwall. Women's RP1 was campused by Pavitra van der Hoven, while Men's AU2, Amputee, Lower Limb or Limb Deficiency, was taken by Brian Zazelia, who has a big future ahead. Women's RP2 gold went to Dina Everick on the same climb, while AU3 amputee, lower limb or limb deficiency was taken by Dominic Geiser. Angelina Zeller hyped the crowd as usual for men's AL1 win, amputee, lower limb or limb deficiency. Men's RP3 was taken by Jamie Bartek, who got to grips with the massive volumes, while in women's RP3, a hand traverse on orange volumes, the gold went to Marina Diaz. Women's AL2 was won by Lucy Jarige, another gold medal for her. And another regular gold medalist is Solène Piret, who won women's AU2. AU3 gold went to Rosaline Schaupert. While Abigail Robinson took the first visually impaired category win with B3, while MB3 went to Cosmin Kandouai. Fumia Handouai got gold in MB2. And finally, MB1 was won by the unbeatable and legendary Shoaita. Big roundup for the paraclimbing comp, and do go and watch that on YouTube. It's free and it was absolutely amazing as it always was. So a really enjoyable thing to sit back and chill to. Okay, now we discussed the boulder, as I said last week, with my co-commentators on the live show in Innsbruck. Please, please go and see that. We had special guests, we had coaches, we had Reini who owned the... Look, just go and watch the videos. But for lead, a couple of talking points. Obviously, Yanya Garmbra. We actually gave her the Athlete of the Week award for Boulder, and then we had to redo that interview on the stage when she won the lead, because no one really expected her to take the double gold. It's not done very often. I mean, Colin Duffy did it last year for the men, but to see Yanya get that emotional in Boulder and then to perform so well in the lead, it was crazy. And she had this one moment where she had to do this clip and it was almost the crux of the route, like super try hard face as she reached out, just got it with her fingertips. Awesome from her on a very, very difficult women's route. And we saw lots of women falling super low on that. The heat didn't help, but it was just the overall difficulty that contributed to those falls. For the men, Sasha Lehman. It it is just cool to see him back on the top spot. He's always up and down in terms of consistency but there was something a little bit different in his eyes when he walked out onto the stage in Innsbruck. I don't know, sometimes like the, the really good Sasha turned up and he, he was on fire. And then Magos and all the rest after that. So super cool comp. The one thing we didn't get to see was the shared finish. So there was a giant purple protrusion on the wall, which the route setters reckon the athletes are that to stand on or mantle up to clip the last chains. And both the men and women's finished in that point but we didn't get any of them to that point. A bit like the Jakarta comp where the same idea was. 
I can't wait for that concept to become reality. And one day we'll see a joint top, but who knows when. Okay, that's the IFSC stuff done. We've got a paraclimbing comp this weekend in Vila, then the lead, and then it all continues. So make sure you're watching that. Okay, next up, some 9B plus action from Seb1. Bibliography is a 9B plus route in Seyus, first climbed by Alex Magos in 2020. He originally gave the grade of 9C, but subsequent ascents by Stefano Gasolfi and Sean Bailey saw the route downgraded to 9B+. Seb's climb is the fourth ascent of the route, and he sent it on the 3rd of June. It's 35 meters long, and Seb fell 11 times after the top crux, a common occurrence on that climb. Seb says the route wasn't in his style, but he enjoyed the process and had to work through tricky weather conditions. Awesome job, Seb, who's just ticking off some of the hardest climbs in the world. Of course, he did that 9C, his 9C DNA. And uh, yeah, everyone just needs to find harder bits of rock to climb at the moment. And I think people are looking. I mean, Stefano Gasolfi was trying silence that 9C. There's rumors uh, about Flatanger when I chatted to Adam recently. So there's hard, hard routes going on there. And I think everyone's just waiting for the next 9C or trying to find it anyway, because Having the right overhanging route with the correct holes that are actually doable but super hard, it, everything needs to come together at once. So where do you guys think the next 9C is going to be? Okay, from sport climbing, let's pull on our big boots and head over to Alaska for some mountaineering news. Alpine climbing in Alaska is always an intense challenge, and Italian mountaineers Silvia Lorigan and Stefano Ragazzo have put up what they think is a new route on Cemetery Spire on the Cathedral Spurs group in the Alaskan mountains, as reported by Planet Mountain. They did the 600 meter route with just one bivy, and it's got difficulties up to 512A and A1+. The descent sounds as hard as the ascent, and they had to abandon 30 meters of rope that got stuck on the rough granite. They only left behind seven hand-placed 8 mm bolts, two pegs, and two nuts. Climbing big mountains like that in Alaska with the weather conditions and just the remoteness of the thing, just it steps up the difficulty so, so much. And often people progress from like, you know, their local climbing into perhaps climbing in the Alps. And then you start to look further afield in Alaska or the Himalayas, perhaps. And it's it's just an awesome thing. I, I have no idea whether I'd want to do that, in all honesty. Like the idea of being on a glacier all alone, getting freezing cold uh, sounds really, really extreme to me. So I'm always super, super impressed when someone sends something new. They did find some tat high up on that route, but below the summit. So they do think it's a first ascent, but who knows, maybe time will prove different. Okay, 9A roundup time. Let's start with Justin Deschamps. As reported by 8A.nu, he sent his first 9A with the send of Cond de Choc. He first tried it last summer, but struggled with the lower crux. He came back stronger and figured out better beta through that section. Cameron Horst has made the first ascent of martial law, a 9A plus in Las Vegas. It's the direct and harder start to an existing 9A called Arrested Development. The new climb is bouldery and has 20 non-stop intense moves into the bottom of Arrested Development. He also did the 9A dad bod on the same day, but gave it a personal downgrade of 8C plus, as reported by 8A.nu. Finally, and also on 8a.nu, Owen Whaley has climbed Man Bod, a 9a in Mount Charleston. It's a new link up between two routes, and in an interview, he says it provided a full body challenge. So that's Dad Bod and Man Bod, which I actually thought was the same climb until I reread my own notes. But uh, awesome from the 9a guys. And Cameron Horst, I shot a gear show with him uh, in the US when I was in Salt Lake City about Fizzy Vantage, which is his dad, Eric Horse company. Uh, and I know the guys and Teresa, I think, is doing a review of all those products. So if you want some climbing protein and collagen and all that kind of stuff, keep an eye on the Climbing Daily Friday gear show and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the action. OK, well, we've talked about 9Bs, so let's do the 9B counter. <laughs> So Seb1, congratulations on your 9B counter with a 9B+, plus. multiple points for you. And yeah, it was climbed a while back, but I think we just kept missing it. So sorry, Seb, you're now immortalized in history, not on the blackboard because it's not here, but I, I, don't, I don't know what we do anymore, but you're on it. Congratulations. <laughs> Seb1, 
So as promised, let's talk about that 15% off and it's a good deal on all clothes on the Epic TV shop. Just make your selection, go to the checkout and enter the code SUMMER15. And while we're talking about the shop, we have a very exciting opening today. And let's take us outside to go and look at what's going on outside of the studio. This is the brand new physical Epic TV shop. It's opening today. We're very excited about it. We've got clothes lined up, harnesses, training gear, helmets I've never even seen before, and pretty much every single climbing shoe, approach shoe, mounted earring boots on the market. And of course, back in the warehouse, we've got even more stuff if you order online. So make sure you come and check it out. If you're in the Clues or Chamonix area, there's an address down below. Okay, back to the studio. So if you're in the clues area, do come and check it out. You can buy stuff in the shop, you can pick things up and it's a very exciting development. And we have lots of shiny gear hanging around that we can play with and talk about on gear shows. So lots of cool content to come. Okay, Epic TV contents time. And Matteo Della Bordella has been climbing once again. The video is out on Epic TV. Here's an Epic teaser. Here we are in a very easy and protected environment. Pakistan, you can't compare at all. It's so much harder, bigger, but still you don't have to push yourself to your limit or to get too tired. You just do some good activity and then you take some good rest. Today we are going to climb a route opened by Giusto Gervasutti in the 30s. These routes have the characteristic of being always very logical, following cracks. Okay, let's start with boots. That video is available on the main channel of Epic TV, so make sure you subscribe to that as well. We've got loads of cool stuff coming out all the time. Now, coming of the week is a little bit tricky because we didn't really do a new show last week. Uh, myself and Hugo, we were in Innsbruck on the World Cup couch, as I like to call it. We did those guests and all that kind of stuff. So the reason I wanted to talk about that is we're considering doing the new show as a live show more often. Of course, even though it's live, you can re-watch it on YouTube. So what do you think? Would you like to see the new show live and raw and all the carnage that that might produce? Or do you prefer the old fashioned traditional new show where we talk to the camera? Do let us know down below and make sure you leave some good comments under this video for next week's video. All right, I think that's it. Is that it, Flo? We done? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, thank you for watching Climbing Daily. Uh, the guys will be back next week and I will see you very soon.